Hey friends and resellers, it's Trish with Well Sourced coming at you with a good old fashioned Goodwill outlet bins haul video. This was from a recent trip to the Goodwill outlet in Nashville and I already have filmed part one of this. I'll link it up here if you haven't had a chance to see it. It was a decent day at the bins. I, if you've watched any of my videos, know that I am a like bread and butter um, reseller. I don't find a lot of high-end items at the bins and a lot of thrift stores in my area just, area just don't have that high-end uh, item that other areas might have. So that leaves me to sell bread and butter items, which I have no problem doing. Um, someday I'll figure out the actual average sale price for bins items. Um, I'd say it's somewhere in the $15 to $25 range in there. And when I'm paying $1.49 a pound for items, that's a good return for me. Sure, I have to sell a few more items. I could spend more time sourcing items that are a higher value for resale, but I would have fewer of those items to list. And I do feel like bread and butter items, things that people need in their wardrobe rather than like that luxurious item or higher end item are things that I'm comfortable selling. So, and I know more about because those are the items I'm buying as well. So enough chit chat. This was a fun day. I picked up a couple pairs of shoes and um, really just the remaining are clothing items. And I think I had a couple accessories. So let's go ahead and get through this. Some of these are a little linty. They've been sitting out. All right, this is Ann Taylor Loft. It's a size large. It is a purple cardigan, button front, um, a full neck on it. It's like a crew neck. And this had some wool in it, I believe. It is 38% merino wool, 31% nylon, and 31% rayon. That can't be right. That doesn't add up to 100. 38% merino wool. Sorry. Okay. So this did have a few little linties on it. I do, if something is covered in dog hair, unless it's worth like $100 in the resale market, I probably am going to leave it at the bins. I've learned my lesson the hard way. I mean, I have four dogs, but I do not have hair covering everything in my life. So anyway, I kind of just bought this, I thought maybe for myself, um, but I also thought it was just a nice kind of wardrobe staple for somebody. It's in like a purple wine sort of color. This is the brand It's Our Time. It's a size medium. I don't know if this is a vintage brand, but this does give me that 90s Y2K sort of look to it. A real fitted deep V rib knit black top. And as always, I'll be putting comps up on the screen um, for what I think I can get for this. And I think on my body form and by using the right keywords, that will do all right. This is a brand that I don't know if I've ever found. I think maybe I got it in a thread up box once. Um, and I have seen it like at TJ Maxx if I were doing retail arbitrage, or I have seen it a couple other places. I know it's a, a popular brand and maybe has lost its luster along the years, but the brand is Current Elliott. And this is a size um, 26 pant. It's the Soho Zip Stiletto. And it's a washed black color. It has these exposed zippers on the front. And then it, it's a washed black with this exposed zipper at the ankle as well. It is a skinny jean um, and a bit of a, I'd say maybe like a mid rise to it. But the comps weren't horrible on it. And these really weigh nothing. So they were in good condition. They didn't have any puckering or a lot of wear to the crotch area. So I thought I would just go ahead and pick those up just because I don't think I've ever gotten that brand before. Okay, next up is a another one of those items that it's a black item that was real linty. Um, that it's not hairy, just linty. It's All Saints size medium. It is a sweater that is a full shoulder over here with a mock neck turtleneck. And it has, it's not a cold shoulder necessarily. It's just sort of an exposed shoulder on one side. A bit of a dolman sleeve. Um, I'm sure it would look fabulous if it wasn't linty and in a 
cotton rayon blend um, if it hadn't been in this bag for the last two weeks since I processed all these items. This is the brand Market and Spruce and it is a polka dot front sweater with a little bit of a, I don't know what that is. They're black polka dots and a maroon sweater or burgundy kind of wine color. It's a size large. The polka dots are all over. And it was a cute sweater that is a cotton rayon blend. This had a little bit of wear in the armpit area, but I thought it was a nice staple for someone's wardrobe. It's Ann Taylor Factory, which means it, you know, didn't retail for the highest amount to begin with compared to Ann Taylor. And a lot of things that we see in the factory, I mean, they're geared towards, it's not just like rejects that didn't make it to the floor. They're like making a lesser quality item for the factory. It had just a touch of pilling in the armpit, which I'm going to be able to take my sweater shaver to. I don't know, maybe this came as a twin set, but it's a floral shell in this navy color and a big floral print on the front. I, I just picked it up. I don't know. I was in a mood apparently that day. This is Victoria's Secret size medium. I do really well selling Victoria's Secret kind of lingerie pieces. This is a sheer lace sort of baby doll, not baby doll, but oh, chemise nighty kind of thing, but it's sheer and it has a laced up back. It's stretchy. It's a size medium with adjustable straps. So that as well will look nice on my body form. Um, it's black. I think it's, I should probably have that listed before Valentine's Day, but um, I didn't. This is the brand Debut, which I looked it up. It's a house brand somewhere, maybe. It is a kind of boxy cropped, not really cropped, but almost cropped length, navy sweater with this, well, maybe it's not navy. I'm gonna say navy sweater, but it might be black. A black sweater with this multi-color uh, stripe on the front of it. It's got a balloon sleeve, and this is just, I think, acrylic. It's nothing important or fabulous, but I just thought it was a cute style. Viscose poly blend. So anyway, it's just a cute sweater that I was 100% sure was navy blue, and now I'm 100% sure is black. This is an anthropology brand, Moulinette Sours, and it is a size zero. It's a really pretty embroidered dress with this V-neck. This is navy blue, and it is kind of a fit and flare, heavy embroidery on it. It has some um, deodorant stains in the armpit. I did throw this through the wash on Gentle after I tried to hand wash it unsuccessfully. Uh, this dress was featured in Gilmore Girls, the new one, the Four Seasons one, um, the, where they revisit them how many ever years later. Lorelai wore this to her parents' house for an event, and so it's nice to be able to say, as seen on Gilmore Girls, if someone's looking for that particular dress, it's a good keyword to use. It's a really pretty dress. Um, the comps on it were pretty good. And I do wonder if the comps, if I did research on whether it said Gilmore Girls on it, like, does that bring in more traffic? Does it give you a higher price for resale? Um, or is it just that people are looking for that dress in general? I think that's a great piece to wear to someone's wedding um, or an event this summer. It's really pretty. This is Abercrombie & Fitch. It's a size large. It's a blouse with this black blouse with a floral pattern on it. It does, it's like a popover design, does not button down all the way. Well, it does sort of, but it has a faux tie on the front, kind of knotted there. Just a real lightweight blouse, long sleeves. I think that's a nice piece. This is Talbot size medium. Someone had their dry cleaning tag on there and it has a dryer sheet from my house. Um, this is a V-neck coral sort of color lightweight knit sweater with these fun palm palm tassel details at the bottom hem it's a three-quarter length sleeve and it is cotton 100 percent cotton so 
you know, it did have a little bit of wash wear maybe to it, but cotton just gets wash wear. That's just kind of what happens. All right, this is um, Land, Land's End, L.L. Bean, medium, midweight, large, tall, men's, merino wool, pullover base layer in gray. And it's a nice, large, tall size, so it's one of those specialty sizes, or not specialty, but fewer and far between sizes. It has the L.L. Bean down here. It's a nice, midweight base layer. This I picked up for myself. The brand is Molly Green, which is a Nashville brand. I think there's three stores in Tennessee, maybe in one in Alabama, and it's online, but the brand is Molly Green. It is a size large, and it's one of those kind of kimono top, open top, um, drapey, lightweight tops in a size large has this fun floral pattern on it. It's almost like a chalkboard style. It's gray back. It did have one little snag on the hem somewhere. I wasn't concerned about it because I'm going to wear it um, probably over a tank when my husband and I go on a couple vacations this year. So nice piece to have in the old wardrobe. This is 41 Hawthorne, size extra large. This is a V-neck look to it. It's got a keyhole, I guess, keyhole front, and it's a semi-sheer floral front with these knit sleeves and a knit back, and it's just a fun floral print in the front, maybe more of a winter piece, but I went ahead and grabbed that. This is a vintage Y2K piece. This is actually Y2K. It's from fall of 2000. It's Gap. And it's 100% cotton made in Hong Kong. Uh, it's not button, darn it, but it's a striped cardigan cotton. This is perfect for spring. This is perfect for that Y2K 90s aesthetic. This I 100% bought for myself. <laughs> this is a shamrock. Um, I think it was rectangular tablecloth. And I bought it solely for myself just because I'm Irish and wanted it. I thought it would be good for the upcoming season. It had no marks on it at all. It could be vintage. It could be from TJ Maxx last year. We just don't know. But it is um, a fun tablecloth that I could use. I have my grandma, um, her Irish, it's China from Ireland. And it has a shamrocks on it that I pull out for like Easter and spring, um, or if I have corned beef and cabbage and fun things like that. So since I am nearly one half Irish, given my genetic makeup, um, I am definitely drawn to Irish things. This is another Ann Taylor piece. It's a size small and it is a open cardigan in this maroon cranberry color. It has some ribbed kind of almost bell sleeves there and it's just a knit body i mean it was nothing fabulous but it's a nice wardrobe staple and it's a viscose nylon spandex blend and it was in nice condition it has been probably two weeks i guess since i went to the bins uh so i kind of have forgotten some of the items that were in in here it's a little surprise for me okay this i grabbed it is a size um large tall and it didn't have any names on it i threw it in my cart it had this infinity symbol on the back and i was like what this has to be something i didn't know if they were workout pants or what the dealio was but it turns out they are cherokee infinity scrub bottoms cherokee i'll put it on the screen if that's right Cherokee Infinity Scrub Bottoms, which I've never picked up the brand Cherokee. I'm always on the look for figs, but this kind of wide leg, almost like a yoga pant, seems to do okay on the resale market. They were in my cart and I left um, before looking them up. And so I'm glad that they actually comped out pretty well. All right, this is J. Crew Factory. It's a size eight boot cut. I want to say navy blue again, corduroy pant. 
It's a mid-rise. It's an older piece, I think from fall of 08. And so, but a boot cut corduroy pant obviously would have been great if I had those maybe three months ago for fall. But you you know, what do you what can you do about it? This is just darling. This is not buttoned, of course, because that's my MO. Let's see if I can button at least the top one here. It's Polo Ralph Lauren, size small, little girl's dress that needs to be <laughs> steamed. But it's this little kind of daisy print, cap sleeves, high neck with some pin tuck pleating. It has a ruffle bottom. It's a drop waist sort of dress. It is lined. It's got... This um, does cover it, but it's not um, steamed right now. Just a little rayon dress. Buttons up the back, super cute. This is Eddie Bauer 3XL, women's kind of heathered purple, short sleeve V-neck tee, just a basic. This is Pure Jill, size large, and they are 100% um, linen, cropped pant in this, it's like a purpley blue color, gray, tie waist, pockets, nice upcoming season, love linen, love to pick up linen. Chico's Travelers. I just sold a Chico's Travelers skirt that may have been even vintage, but the Travelers line does very well. It gets a lot of interest in my closet. This is a size one, which is a medium, and it is a faux wrap, three-quarter length sleeve, long line top in this animal print. Mm, is that like a zebra? And that Chico's Travelers is a great fabric because it doesn't wrinkle. I mean, that's been in a bag for two weeks. It doesn't wrinkle and um, is a great piece, like lightweight for travel. This is Isaac Mizrahi, New York. He has a couple lines. None of them are necessarily a super high end. I just thought these were cute. Size four, pink shorts with, they're not really, a. Di it's like a diamond pattern on there. Just a cute short. The comps on these were like $6 to $15. But um, coming up into the right season with the right keywords, I think they're a cute short. All right, this is a men's shirt. It's wool rich. It's 100% cotton. And it is a lightweight cotton button front tee or button front shirt with button front pockets and just a I don't know if that's kind of like a marled look to it, heathered, uh, reddish pink color. I did buy that for my husband to try on if he wanted to try that on. Okay, this is Offline by Airy. It's just a, I, I think it's their ba a bathing suit top. Um, I thought it was a crop top when I first got it, but it's a size large, stretch medium support. And um, I think maybe the offline is their bathing suit brand, but this would be cute with a fun pair of black bathing suit bottoms, or if it is a top, just with, you know, denim, denim shorts. Okay, this is the brand Wackle, and this one, this had a little bit more wear than a bra that I normally would pick up. Wackle, you can see the tag has been worn, but it's a 44G, so it's definitely a not as common size. This one had more wear. I found two of them. Um, got the other one out. But I'm just going to sell them as a lot and just identify that, hey, this one has more wear than the other. But it's a pretty lace bra, as you can see. Not very well. And this is the other one that was in a little bit better shape. It had less wash wear to it. So it's the same bra. Um, it had a little bit of, you know, stretch 
under the arms but over, oh, overall it's it still has life left in it so I thought I would grab those this is the brand Paramore it's a 36 triple D which is an E I think or is that an F triple triple D is an F it's just a tan kind of color bra and light padding on there so I don't think I've ever picked up this brand before, but it was a nice bra in good condition. All right, this is the brand Cacique. It's a 42D and it is a strapless bra in a beige tan color. It does not have the removable straps, honestly, but like if you're gonna be wearing this as a strapless bra, it's not gonna be comfortable <laughs> to wear as a regular bra, at least in my experience as a bustier woman. Um, so there's really, you know, I'm not sad that it didn't have the removable straps because it would be solely probably used for a strapless bra. So I went ahead and grabbed that. This was interesting. This to me was like maybe vintage Chico's. It's Additions by Chico's. I've never heard of it. It's a size medium. Um, it's 100% cotton made in India. But this top itself has like I don't know, a postmark, maybe some travel information, some words written on here, some, let's see, San Francisco, just postcard kind of look to it. It really had a 90s Y2K look to it to me, so I did grab that. This is super cute. This was in a really picked over bin. I Not everyone picks up Lauren Ralph Lauren, but I do because I like it. Um, it's a size 10 and not buttoned, <laughs> of course, but it is a, um, button front blouse that has a peplum hem at the back and it has bits and, or let's see, horseshoes, um, and bridles on it. So it has an equestrian look to it. So it will be a nice listing with a lot of good keywords to it and it is a 100% cotton. This is another shirt I got to see if my husband wanted it. Um, it's just Daniel Cremeau which is like a Dillard's house brand I think. It's 70% tensile, 30% linen. It's a size large. I thought even if he didn't like it um, that it was still a nice fabric. Maybe the brand itself doesn't have the highest resale, but the fabric itself was good enough to have a resale value to it to me. This was definitely a fail, but I kept it in here to show the uh, truths of shopping at the bins when you don't always check comps. I do check comps sometimes if I'm, if it's like a totally funky piece or something that I think is worth money or that couldn't sell on its own necessarily despite whatever the brand might be and so i picked this up it said romwe w r o m w e latest street fashion online but i didn't really read that that closely it is a chambray lightweight button front shirt it's a women's and it is um a hundred percent cotton now I went to check comps on, I couldn't even really find comps. These are like $2 online new. <laughs> so honestly, I can still sell it on style, but it is not something that I would necessarily pick up again had I checked the comps at the store. Even though it's lightweight and it didn't cost me a lot to bring home. Um, I'm okay to take a chance on something, but like a basic chambray shirt maybe is not, you know, as big of a deal maybe if it were like Gap or Banana Republic I wouldn't really care about taking a chance but um when it's a brand that retails for like 99 cents maybe not the best best thing all right I I think these might be a vintage pair of shorts from L.L. Bean they're made in India um it's men's it's a standard fit gingham check plaid pant and it is a 34, 36 waist, um, 
98% cotton with a touch of stretch. It's a standard fit. But just based on the tag and the fact that it was made in India, I kind of feel like it's a vintage pair of shorts. But I just think it's a classic style. And it kind of has that trendier look to it. Okay, this is American Eagle Outfitters. And it is a size 2. It's the um, Vintage High Rise Festival. So these are from a couple years ago. It has a little bit of an older tag. They're from 2017. These are just a pair of destroyed shorts with um, pockets showing, lots of distressing, real short inseam. And I got that pair. And then I got this brand of Pistola size 29 shorts. They are a cotton spandex blend. They're just a pair of cutoff shorts with some nice whiskering. And that brand doesn't historically do well for me, but I've just been picking up shorts. If I find them, they don't weigh anything at the bins and summer will be here before we know it, right? So this is cut from the cloth. Um, and a size 12 petite. It's a toothpick skinny. I don't care if skinny is on their way out or what people say, but this is a great pair of skinny pants. These are feel really nice. They have a little bit of stretch to them. They're a 12 petite and it's just a, um, a skinny pair of pants and a medium sort of wash. So just, you know, classic pair of pants to bring home. All right. These are adorable. This is a Joe's jeans size 12 kids, but they're a light wash jean with this adorable um, ruffle at the cuff with a little bit of a slit. And honestly, if these sell for $10, I don't care. They're just too cute. <laughs> and um, I just, something about, I know that everyone talks about keeping things out of a landfill and being sustainable, things like that. And I really truly feel like that because... <sighs> You know, sometimes you find, if you find new with tags items at the bins and they pu they're they pulling out bins and you're like, but there's so much left in there. And you think, where is that going next? Is it really going to the landfill? Some places are different. So some places go to landfill, I believe. Some places maybe sell overseas or donate overseas. But the sheer amount of clothing that I dig through when I go to the bins every couple weeks is just astonishing that that much waste is going out. So that's why I really like buying secondhand or finding secondhand items because at least it's getting a second chance at life or maybe even a third before then it goes to the landfill. I mean, when my dad was a kid, he always talks about, well, I had one pair of, you know, home pants and one pair of school jeans and I had this much extra on the bottom that we folded up so I could wear them all year long. And kids just wore stuff out. Um, adults wore things out. They mended things. So I just, we're in a different, obviously, generation of not doing that. Plus, some of the junk that you buy at Walmart, I'm guilty of it too, or Old Navy, or any kind of fast fashion, or some of the nicer fashions, are just not made to last. After two washes, you're like, okay, well, I guess this can go to the trash because it was not meant to last. Whereas if you have an item that you've had for 20 years that still you wear quite often and are still getting use out, I find joy in that. All right, off my soapbox. This is um, cut from the cloth as well. And this is a baby boot cut in a size... 12 short. This is a nice high rise and it's got a boot cut on the bottom. There was not any wear on the bottom. And because it's a 12 short, that 12 petite person, I think I found those at different bins, but might be something that someone can wear comparably. All right, American Eagle Outfitters again. This has a little bit of stretch. It's a washed black color. These are a size 10, also the High Rise Festival. I found a third pair that I brought home that I've already trashed because when I was washing them, they had an unfortunate stain on the back that simply did not come out and it had kind of torn up the front more than just the natural distressing. <clears throat> okay, these are fun. They're a pair of Levi's shorts 
and they are a size nine um, junior sizing. I These are from 1999, so they are vintage. Someone has stitched in the sides um, to create a little bit of less of a gap. I'm just going to use my seam puller to pull those out. But this is a pair of vintage, I assume, shorts that were supposed to be shorts, but they may have been DIY'd. They're that same kind of almost festival vibe, festival short. But um, they have been taken in in a few spots. So super cute, great vintage pair of shorts. All right, this is a pair of Miss Me jeans. I don't know why I keep picking up Miss Me. They're always at the, always at the bins. Um, they're a size 29. They're the easy boot. And I did check these over to make sure that they had sort of all their bling to them before I got too crazy. So it has this lace overlay on the back with like a cheetah print embroidered and it has some blingy buttons. It's got sort of a flap pocket with this um, same pattern here. And it had a decent amount of heel wear at the bottom because that's, I am a tall person. So jeans, even if I'm wearing them with my cowboy boots over my cowboy boots, it's simply not an issue. They're not going to be dragging on the ground because I just um, am tall enough that that's not an issue. But I'm going to just sell them as is and somebody will buy them or they won't. All right, this is super cute. This is the brand cut from the cloth as well, but it's a their clothing line. It's a size extra large and it's a sheer blouse with these tab sleeves. It's got a fun pattern on here with this blue, kind of Tiffany blue, robin egg blue, olive green, pinks and reds. Just a really cute blouse. You're going to need to wear a cami or a tank underneath, but a lightweight breezy blouse and the comps on that were pretty decent. This is another Chico's Traveler's piece, size one, which is a medium. Um, I thought this was a zebra print or like a lion, but I think it's more like a leaf. Kind of palm frondy kind of look to it. It's a three quarter length open cardigan. Uh, and just in nice condition, super soft, great for travel. This brand meant nothing to me. I liked the pattern. The brand is Midnight Sky, which I assume is just a boutique brand. It's a size extra large and it is a striped cap sleeve blouse with these um, birds and flowers on it. I just thought it was a really pretty blouse for spring. Nothing fabulous, nothing amazing, but something that someone could wear um, in the upcoming season and I'm not going to get a ton of resale value on that, but I do think that it's pretty. This is a pair of shoes I got, and it is Skechers air-cooled foam. These look literally brand new. Um, there's a little bit of wear on the footbed. I did throw them through the wash. The sole has just that normal amount of wear because they import them as slippers, putting on that kind of fabric, and then it wears off naturally, just like Tom's. And these are a size seven, I think. What size are you? Seven and a half. This is fun geometric print, black and white, and just a knit pull on flat that are totally washable and in nice condition, I thought were super cute. Okay, this is my one thing that probably weighed more than anything in my cart. It is a crochet I would call these granny squares. If you have another word for those, please let me know. I'm not a crocheter, but it is a throw blanket in this fun multicolored print blocking. And then it has a kind of zigzag patterned um, edging to it. But it's definitely a nice throw blanket size and I love it. I will keep it for myself if it doesn't sell, but I have a lot of blankets and um, I would like to find this a new home. I think someone will be able to rock that in their aesthetic that they may have in their house. And so I did pick that up. It weighs maybe three or four pounds, maybe even closer to five. So, you know, I paid up for it a little bit, but 
I don't even care if it's not vintage. There's not really a way for me to tell. It's the fact that someone took the time and energy, hours and hours, to crochet this. And I appreciate the energy that goes into all that, just like quilts. So I have a hard time leaving quilts behind as well. All right, this is Calvin Klein, size 10. It's this fun royal blue dress. It's like a sheath dress with this ruffle down the front, kind of goes across the side. And then it gathers over here. It has some pleating up here at the neckline. It's just a very pretty dress. This is something that could easily be worn for an event or to a wedding, which is also an event. Okay, this is, I guess I was drawn to this color this day. Uh, it's Tahari, which is nothing to that I necessarily would specifically want to bring home it's a size eight petite i just really liked the dress it's a short sleeve sheath dress with pockets and that royal blue color short length it has a nice gold tone exposed back zipper and it's just a pretty career piece for someone this is Banana Republic size four and it is an older piece, but I liked it and brought it home. So it is a wool tank sheath dress, sleeveless sheath dress with this lace detail on either side, kind of like a tuxedo stripe almost. It is lined and it is, I mean, it's from early 2000s. Let me find the tag here. So it's a rayon wool shell, and then it's just a poly lining. It's from, okay, 2013. So it's 10 years old, but I just think it's a nice dress that has um, a back zipper back to it with a V. It's just a pretty dress. And maybe great for the holidays, maybe not right now. Okay, this is the brand, um, Let's see. Pins on. This is just a kind of boho hippie backpack in this. What's the word I want to use? Um, what is that word? It's like a type of blanket or a poncho. Mm -mm, not coming to me. I'll have to put it up on the screen when I do think about what it's called. Serape. 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 Um, type knit to it, blanket. And it's just a backpack. So, you know, for those festival shorts, going to the festival, have this in your backpack with your stuff in it. I just thought that was cute. Okay. I knew I was missing a bag. I just couldn't find it. Um, this is just a few shoes that I got this day. So the first thing I got were, out of this bag, was a kid size four um, LL Bean slipper, Sherling line suede slip slipper. These had decent comps on them. And Goodwill wanted $3.99 for them and no one bought them. So, um, but these look, aside from riding on the bottom, which is super annoying, um, <laughs> these look in really nice condition. And that is the color that they're supposed to be on the inside. It's not that it's yellowed. So I was happy to pick those up. This is a pair. I always pick up Ariat boots. I don't even care if they're in destroyed, thrashed, um, worse for wear look. These are definitely broken in. They don't have a steel toe or anything. Um, but they are men's size 12 Ariat pull-on boots with a kind of almond-shaped round toe. They have some wear. Um, I'm going to take my leather conditioner and then my Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam to them. Definitely a little more wear on this one. And these have a rubber sole to them, which is nice. This one did have a little bit of paint on it. I'm going to try to get that off, but honestly... 
Here's the deal with cowboy boots, in my opinion. First off, men are not going to have their jeans tucked into these um, or be wearing shorts or a skirt to a festival or something with them, or they might. But um, so it, you know, the broken in is okay. That piece, they will polish up nicely. They're already worn in. And these new are a couple hundred dollars or at least over 150. So for someone to be able to get them on the resale market, these probably weigh four pounds. So I did pay up for them, but I just, they're a nice quality boot. I have Ariat's. My husband has them. I just can't see those going off to the landfill for some reason. That's just how I feel about it. All right. This is a really cute pair of shoes. I, these are a chance item. They wanted $5.99 for these at the Goodwill. Um, which this is marked 129.03, I mean 23, geez. Uh, so I don't know if these ever even hit the store because I was there like February 2nd. So they may have marked these and then they never took them. This is a loafer, it's a suede loafer in this tan color with this bow and tassel detail. It's a bit of a pointy toe. It has a stacked wood heel. It has um, just some nice details for a wardrobe. It's a size seven and a half Banana Republic leather, excuse me, suede and in very nice condition except for a few parts where there was a little bit of scuffing to the suede. So right there, and there was one little mark on the toe. So I kind of bought them. I, I mean, they'll sell as is. I think they are, this is a nice loafer for somebody, especially somebody who has maybe like a capsule wardrobe or a minimalist wardrobe. I think these are a great addition to their wardrobe, but I am gonna try to clean them up with my suede cleaner. And they wanted $5.99 for these, but I don't, these never went into the store, I don't think, just based on the fact that the tag, there's no way they would have had time. All right, final item. This <clears throat> is, and mind you, the lighting in my warehouse is, you know, fluorescent lighting, so you can't necessarily get good look at stuff, but this is a <clears throat> wallet. It's a green. It has some wear to it. I think I can clean it up because honestly, it's in decent enough shape to resell the brand is fossil which i like picking up um this is probably maybe even part of their like already vintage line so it's probably supposed to look a little bit aged but it has you know credit card pocket area and a little coin purse area if i had opened this up and it had like a checkbook slot then i would know it's probably vintage because who carries a checkbook around anymore hardly anyone so Anyway, I think I can condition up the leather a little bit and make it pop a little bit better. And I'm hoping that these suede shoes do okay. Um, the Ariat boots, they'll clean up all right and sell. Will they sell for a million dollars? No, but they also will be able to have a different life somewhere else. So that's it. That is my haul. I was hoping to get back to the bins next week. That's my goal. So um, fingers crossed that I get to do that. Thanks so much for joining me. I need to get all this stuff listed before I get to go back to the bin. So that's kind of my <laughs> motivation to get some things done. I need to go pack up some orders. And if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe down below, hit that bell to be notified so that you can be notified when I post new content and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.